Hello, welcome to Biblical Perspectives, episode three, and we are going to talk today about resurrection power, but to get there, we're going to start by talking about prayer. And Paul, in all of his letters, he talks about how he is praying for the individuals, whether he's praying for Timothy or Titus, he's also praying for the church in Corinth, praying for the church in Galatia, praying for the church in Ephesus, and in Chapter 1, verse 15, it says, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And then he begins to tell us what he is praying for. And he is praying for the people uh, that they will receive the wisdom, that they you will have the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of God, and that your eyes and your hearts will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saints, what is the immeasurable greatness, and this is the key right here. That all of these things he want them, wants them to have so that they might know his power toward us who believe. Now, what power... I just mentioned it in the opening, but but Frank, by the way, folks, I'm here with my buddy Frank again. Frank, good to see you. See you. We're always together. People know us by now, hopefully. If you're just joining us the first time, there's a bunch of old stuff to watch. But but um, Frank, what power is uh, Paul talking about in those prayers to God? Oh, I think he is, he is talking about the amazing remarkable power that is evident in Jesus Christ's resurrection and uh, that he is alive. That that makes a huge difference for the believers, for us. And um, and he reminds them of that. It, unpack that, Frank. What is... So the resurrection power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us. How is that, how is that possible? Or how, I mean, maybe that's one of the great mysteries that we can't understand. Well, well, one of the things is, you know, we cannot be Christians without Jesus being resurrected. Yes. Without his resurrection, even his perfect life yep. would have been useless. Pointless. Point. The cross would have been pointless without the resurrection. The cross would, would not achieve uh, its final purpose. Yeah. Because really, we are not celebrating Christ on the cross. I mean, that's the sacrifice that he gave. But we are happy that he is alive. Yeah. And because he is alive and what he has done in his life and on the cross, yeah. he can minister to us today. And I think sometimes we live um, our Christian life in a way that does not reflect that reality. Do we really live as if we believe that he is alive? Yeah. Do we really live as if we believe that the same power that is at work, that was at work in his resurrection, can be available to us so that people who are literally spiritually dead <laughs> in their sins become alive? Hmm. I mean, that's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just as powerful as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, so I think that is what he reminds uh, his believers in Ephesus, that they should be mindful of that reality. Yeah. And I think we do well to, um, to remember that and to um, remind ourselves that actually Jesus is the victor. He has won the battle. He is alive. He is for us. And therefore, we are not alone. And 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 I, I like what you said that we need to live as if we believe this, but we also need to live with this power, right? So it says, and he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is the his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In other words, like uh, the the power of Jesus Christ has been put into the church, the fullness of him. Is in the church so that so that it can live as this as this glorifying body of who God is. Yes. Now, if you go to verse uh, eighteen, yeah, uh, th there is an interesting twist, I think, okay. uh, of thought. 
usually we think uh, once uh, we have accepted Jesus Christ, we've accepted the gospel, we have inherited eternal life. But here it says, having the eyes of our hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he, God, has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So, Think of this. Uh, this is marvelous, you know. He, we are actually the riches of his inheritance. Mm. So he looks to us human beings as his inheritance. Mm. He, we belong to him. Yeah, uh, we are given to him, and uh, if we are his inheritance, man, then we should live. Like that. Like that. <laughs> like shining treasures, yes, right? Like yes. shining jewels. You, you would not live, you want to live uh, in a way that doesn't give glory to God, that doesn't reflect the power and the victory and the beauty and the joy that comes through the gospel uh, and his saving grace. What do you think it is, Frank? What what causes it? Because what you described, that joy, that, that emotion, I see that in new believers. Right. Yeah, I mean, I see that too. New believers are. We have a lady in our church, Cassie, and she is just. She she literally changed her name to Cassie loves Jesus Ford. I mean, like her middle name is loves Jesus now. She 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 sent me a picture. It's on her license. She really? changed it. She's wow. so excited about who Jesus is and, and what he's about in her life, and. Yeah, what is it that that causes us as Christians as we move away from that to become more apathetic? Not apathetic. You know, it reminds me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it reminds me of the story, the parable that Jesus uh, um, told us about the sower. Yeah. And and the seeds that fell on the ground. You know, yeah. and the weariness of some, and uh, and the busyness of others. Yeah. And and the distractions of life, I think, leads all of us to points where we lose sight of who we really are in God's sight and how precious we are and how valuable we are and how yeah. glorious we, we can be through his power and his grace. It almost comes back to that, that, that history related to Ephesus where it says, that you do a lot of good things and you've been tested and all this, but you've abandoned the, your first love. Mm -hmm. um, and then it says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, some versions say, remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. And now we could be tempted to think that it's about a work, but it's about a heart thing, right? It's about It's about getting back into that reminder of, of that we are treasures of God uh, and that that's how we're called to live, not just by our outward works, but by what literally shines out of us. Uh, uh, you know, um, there, there is, there, there is another element that I think is connected to what we are talking about. Yeah. And that uh, is a, a reminder to all of us who think we live in the, in the end times of earth history. You know, he says, um, what is the, it was 19, is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe. You know, if that is really the case, as Paul says, then actually we should not be afraid of the end times. Mm. Think about it. Many people are worrying now nowadays, you know, about climate change and natural catastrophes or nuclear war that might break out and this and that. Or all the sin in the world. Or and all the sin in the world and 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 the evil. And it, it's, a, it's a depressing perspective. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's something. But if you, if you are aware there is immeasurable greatness, there is power for us available who believe in Jesus Christ, then he can lead us through whatever circumstances we face then he can lead us through the end times because he is eager to save us. He wants to save us. And so we don't need to be afraid of um, that we will not have the power to resist. We will not have the power to, uh, you know, to, to fight the enemies, whatever it is. 
but but we can live with confidence. We can have a, a boldness, as we yeah, yeah, talked yeah. about in the last session, yeah, that gives us, um, you know, that that let other people see that there is hope in our lives. Yeah, yeah. We, we're not we're, we're not overwhelmed by, by, but we press on, you know, yeah. and and we all realize. Uh, he has given us something that no earthly uh, human being can ever deliver. That might be the greatest witness even more than our words is if people walk around and see people that aren't stressed, aren't overwhelmed, aren't in panic about what's happening. And, you know, no, we, we shouldn't say, stressed. we shouldn't, well, you know, we, we all will be stressed. We all can be a little overwhelmed over this or that. Yeah, yeah. It, it is not a sin to feel like yeah, that. Yeah. But in that, we need to be remind ourselves, you know, who we really okay, are, okay. and and that this is not the final horizon. Yeah, yeah. And even though I might be stressed, I might be overwhelmed by this or that. Remind yourself, remind myself of the fact that He has given us immeasurable greatness of His power. That that uh, He through His blood has saved us, has given us peace. He talks about that in the next mm-hmm. chapter. You know, uh, and and that is something that the world is missing. And that we can experience in all our stressful situations and in all our troublesome circumstances, he is greater than that. That's good. That's good. I like that. I think it's something to remind us all. Maybe, you know, as Paul prayed this over us, we should pray this prayer over ourselves, you know, and pray this for our fellow believers that that we will know what is the hope to which he has called us. And what are the riches? But as you said, it's a twist on that, that we are the glorious inheritance of Jesus Christ. And are you really uh, grateful as he is in verse 16, you know, to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers? You know, sometimes in the church, we encounter people who are, let's say, a little more difficult uh, yeah, to well, deal with. We we refer to those as, as I once heard, EGRs, extra grace required. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but, you know, at the same time, the church can be such a blessing mm-hmm. if we realize that this is something that God has made possible. Yeah. We would not have chosen the church as a fellowship <laughs> if it were not through Jesus Christ. Yeah. For others... Who have experienced the same transforming grace and power in their lives and for that i think we can be grateful and we can see the good in others i like that and envy that because i mean let's face it paul everywhere he went people pushed back on him in some ways or another and yet and even probably some people we know in writing some of his letters not this letter to the ephesians but in other letters he wrote uh at times those people uh were frustrating him i gave him a hard time and yet yet he still gave thanks for them. Yeah, you know, did not give, yeah. did not cease to give thanks, and it's a good reminder. Me as a pastor, you know, give thanks for every single one of my men- members, no matter the challenges. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, in your work, uh, as you travel the world and run into some interesting characters now and then, yes. you know, don't don't cease to give thanks for them, Frank. Those interesting characters. Yeah, so. And I would say to our church members as well, and to those watching. If there's difficult people in your life, maybe one of the best things you can do is to thank God for for them and that they are loved by him also. And and as you pray, thanks over them and also recognize what that God wants to make them part of his immeasurable, glorious mm-hmm. inheritance, mm-hmm. that it will change your perspective on who that person mm-hmm. is, which would be very good. Mm-hmm. That's good, Frank. I appreciate you taking the time to join us for this episode. I know it's a little shorter than normal, but but... But we want you to go out there and live with the power of the resurrection. And that power is not just the power working in you, but the power that 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 made you part of the inheritance of Christ. You are a precious jewel. And 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 God looks on you with love and favor and he sees in you the workings of his son Jesus. And so live in such a way that that you display that to all the world and um, trust in him and who he is. It's so good to have you with us, and I hope that you'll join us again next week as we continue our study through the book of Ephesians. Again, uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. 
hit the thumbs up button to like this episode, and that'll help share it. And by the way, you yourself can share any of these episodes with friends through your Facebook page, through Twitter, through uh, other social media means. Or if you're like me and you're not on social media at all, don't worry about it, but definitely hit that thumbs up button so that you can help uh, it get more traffic in the days to come. All right, thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you next week for episode four in our study through the book of Ephesians. Bye-bye.